Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, you're attending the What's New for Summon in 360 uh, and in TOTA services. Uh, my name is Brett Cook, as Scott just mentioned. I am the Director of Product Management focusing on Summon. Um, and today, I'm here to talk to you about a variety of different things related to Summon and TOTA 360, um, including recent accomplishments that we've done, uh, some new Summon functionality that we have in the system, uh, review what we have planned for the August release for both Summon and 360 and TOTA. Um, we'll also look ahead to what's coming in the fourth quarter of this year uh, for 360 in TOTA and for the Summon Roadmap. And as Scott mentioned at the end, we will have some time for questions, so please be sure to submit the questions. I love them. I, I really want to hear from you. Or let me know what I can do to help. <clears throat> so first, we're going to focus in a little bit on recent Summon improvements. Um, each year when we plan our roadmap, there are a variety of areas we like to focus on, our pillars. Um, I'll go over just a few of them right now. Uh, search and exploring, we're always taking a look at relevance and how we're delivering results to the end user and how are they finding what they need and making sure that that's effective. Uh, we always work on making sure that we have an open system so that our APIs work well, not only with internal products here at Ex Libris, but also with other systems external to us. Um, anything that's in your environment that's going to make your life easier by connecting to, we want to be open to that um, and provide as much access as possible. Um, user experience is something we focus on as well. We'll talk about that a lot today because we've got some really exciting changes coming up related to that. Um, how do we make sure the end user has whatever tools, whatever uh, functionality they need <coughs> in order to be successful in finding the content they're looking for? And that includes, if you look just below that, accessibility, um, which is critical, making sure that everyone, regardless of their situation or their needs for access, can get um, access to the content they need. Um, and then finally, library empowerment, which also includes a lot of those other things like analytics and consortia support. That's giving you the tools that you need to be effective uh, managing, managing the entire system and being successful in your day-to-day -day goals. So far this year, we've had a couple of successful releases. One came out in February. The main focus of that was updating the APA citation style for the seventh edition. You now have access to both sixth and seventh edition in seven. And then just a couple of months ago in May, we released uh, um, a variety of functionality. I'll do a little bit of a deep dive on some of these and review some updates that we've had since May, as well as what that functionality is. In particular, I want to talk a little bit about the new facet of separating print from ebooks when searching. This was at the top of the idea exchange for a long time. Um, it was voted on by nerds, and it was a I believe it was the top um, item voted on last year. Um, this did uh, uh, we were able to. Um, as part of this effort, uh, create two new facets that you'll find in the top of the facet pane um, in the refine your search area, and that is one for print and one for physical items and one for electronic items in your library. Um, the current facet or the previous facet before we released this one uh, was the book ebook combined combined value under content type. That is still there, but, if, um, but as I mentioned, those were combined and you couldn't break them out separately. These two facets um, do allow you to break it out separately and is configurable by you. Uh, one thing I want to call out, we released, released this in May, and since then we've done a few improvements around it. Um, as I'll discuss in a moment, you need to set up the backend processing uh, in order for this uh, facet to be available on your site. Um, there was an issue for someone over all my customers where that configuration return, would return to off or revert to off overnight. Um, that has been resolved. <clears throat> there were also some issues where some of you went out and tried out the electronic materials facet um, and found that it didn't return uh, any results or enough results. Um, and we uh, improved that. We found a bug that was causing that to occur in some cases, and that should be addressed. Uh, we've also implemented a toggle between the two facets. Uh, when you use the toggle, the, the facets in combination, um, because of the way it's calculated, um, they don't actually work well together and you don't get the results that you expect. Um, because again, it is a calculated um, uh, measure rather than something that's pulled off of a single field. Um, if you do want to do an include or an exclude of both format, format, ah, excuse me, formats at the same time, uh, use the book ebook facet value under content type. That's still there and it works great. Uh, for that particular piece that does pull everything that is very, very thorough and including everything that is a book or an electronic book. So if you want to do that, you can still do that there. Um, there is one remaining outstanding bug we're working on fixing right now. <clears throat> and that is that um, with the new toggle back and forth between the two um, facets, if you hit clear all facets, it will not clear that particular facet. The only way to clear that, and you can still clear it, you just need to uncheck it. So just click on it again um, and that will remove it. 
Uh, we will address that as soon as possible. Uh, but again, if you can, please go out and take a look at this. Um, so if you haven't already, um, as I mentioned, you have to configure this for your site before it will take place. There's a process where we do this calculation as, as part of the index update. So you're gonna need to turn on that backend process. And you're going to need to do this in production. Um, so you go into uh, the settings area of um, Summon, uh, the backend, you go to refine your search. Um, and then <clears throat> right here, you'll find the backend process for physical books. Switch that to on, click save settings, and then uh, that will be set up so the next time the index is run, uh, it will take effect. Uh, it will take approximately a week for that process to be completed. Um, so I'd say if you're interested, um, even if you're interested, once we get that final bug fixed, I'd say go ahead and turn it on now. If you've turned it on already, um, it is good and continues to be good and should not have reverted um, since then. So um, just do that to get it set up. And then once that process is completed, again, after a week of it being turned on, you want to turn those facets on in uh, your user interface. And once that's done in production, the actual backend process, you can go to either preview or production to check this out. So set it to run in the background in production. And then a week later, go to your preview and turn it on and check it out if you haven't already. All you need to do is for physical books, turn that on right there at the bottom of that uh, tile for refine your search. Same thing for ebook filters enable, just flip the slider, slider on the left from default to custom and switch it from off to on. Then hit save, and within five minutes, those facets will appear in whatever environment you're in, whether that's preview or production. In addition, uh, in May, we added the ability to apply your site proxy to the DOI link in the preview pane. Previously, uh, there was no proxy applied, so a lot of uh, those links would result in someone uh, ending up at a paywall or some type of login information that they did not know how to uh, log in for. Um, that's been addressed now. You can apply your proxy to this link. Um, there was also initially a bug related to it where open access links uh, would have a proxy applied, which would result in an error. That's been addressed as well. So again, uh, if you haven't checked that out, go check it out in the preview environment. Uh, it is available. Uh, if you go check it out today, uh, we are in the process of pushing out uh, the August release into preview today. So you may uh, hit a few bumps, uh, but I will send out a notification as soon as that is live. If you want to configure this uh, proxy application to the DOI um, link, all you need to do is go under settings and search results in your admin console. And then at the bottom of the tile there, you'll find the new control, which is box DOI links enabled. Just flip that slider on the left-hand side to custom and click on on, and then click save. And within five minutes, that should be live in your system. A variety of other improvements and fixes that we've added to the system recently um, are um, we've taken a look at the following items or issues and we either resolve them or complete them. That includes uh, addressing a parser error um, on the API for the advanced search for DOI. Um, if you did an advanced search for DOI, excuse me, it caused the uh, um, error for the API parser. Uh, for a little while, the summon user statistics were not available and the zero results search results, um, if you were able to get in, was returning an error. You've addressed both of those things. You should be able to go in and access uh, your summon uh, usage analytics uh, now um, and see that zero search results uh, report. <clears throat> uh, previously, there was a link in the client center uh, that took you to summon usage statistics, as well as one in the admin console that I've been showing you in the last few slides. Uh, unfortunately, there is a current uh, um, bug in the link from the client center that we need to address, um, and that one's not available, but you can get to the summoned use of statistics uh, via the link or the um, tab in the admin console. <clears throat> so uh, my apologies for not having the one client center, but we'll get that one fixed as soon as possible. Uh, we also discontinue the ability to create free individual RefWorks accounts for institutions that are not using RefWorks. Um, if you currently have RefWorks enabled on your site, it should continue to work as uh, previously. Um, this only impacts, uh, um, we change our policy on individuals who are not at an institution that has RefWorks um, and uh, we've modified the functionality to reflect that. Um, we also did some work on chat images to help with the resizing of them. Uh, we fixed some translations and some in preview. Um, we addressed an uh, issue with adding a proxy in the vendor equal redirector. We, address some issues of, about HTML being returned in permalinks for Open Athens proxy, that's been fixed. Um, we adjusted the date facet so that it can now correctly handle time zone differences. Um, and we did some work on the chat interoperability. 
Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, what's coming up on August 4th for 360 Antenna Services. We've got a lot of good things coming out in that release as well. Some of the highlights for this third quarter release include <clears throat> the ability to export details from the view changes log. I'll show you an example of that in a minute and share a few more details. Um, the ability to limit your results to videos only and the A to Z list. Um, as videos become a much more popular um, content type, uh, this is certainly a nice addition. Um, we've also added some email validation for email addresses when you're completing um, an ILL and a reporter problem form in 360 Link. In the past, we did not validate that email address, which meant that people could have a typo. Um, that's been addressed. <clears throat> we also did some work around secure, security vulnerabilities. Um, just so you know, for both Summon 360 and actually all x products, uh, we periodically have third parties come in and analyze our cloud for security um, and uh, stability and things like that. And so they give us a, um, uh, an analysis of what they see and how we can improve it. And of course, there's always areas for improvement. Um, we've done some work around that, and that will be included in this quarter release as well. So as I mentioned, you'll have the ability to download a log of review change of any changes that have been made in, uh, in the Client Center or 360 products. Um, it's, this is a long-standing enhancement request. This will allow you to, to use this data downstream and easily do some analysis outside of the client set. Um, download, it will download a TSV uh, file um, for this time period you specify and the event types you specify as well. And as I mentioned, you're now going to have the ability to limit any results in the A to Z list to videos only. Um, there'll be at least two ways to do that. One of which is using that radio button that you can see above the search box to limit your initial search to video only. Or once you've completed a search using the refine results link uh, to again, limit to videos only. <clears throat> Next, I wanna talk a little bit about the summon quarter of the release, which is coming up. As I mentioned a moment ago, we're in the process today of putting the new release out into preview. Um, I will send out a um, set of release notes as well as instructions for the preview environment as soon as that's live. Uh, we're excited about some of the things that will be coming out. Um, a lot of the things this time around are actually some things on the back end that you may not be able to see as part of the user interface, but I'll share with you everything today that we've got going on. And that includes continuing that work on Sierra via Summon um, integration. Um, I've got an update on what's happening with short URLs for citations. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what it means to have better tag matching for best bets. Um, we're continuing to do work on subject heading normalization for CDI. Um, so things like these last two, the CDI and the uh, um, more convenience to access full text quick links to PDFs. This is work that we're doing at the index level. <clears throat> Won't be actually released as part of this um, uh, August release, uh, but is impacting and influencing the functionality that you see in the user interface. And in particular with the quick links, I'll talk a little bit about that when I talk about the December release um, and that user interface refresh. But let's do a deep dive on a few of the things we've got coming as part of this August release part. Uh, CRV Summit, as I mentioned, we're continuing work on that. We've just got a little bit more of uh, functionality release into the preview environment, and then we will have uh, our early adopters evaluate that and give us our go ahead, assuming that all that functionality is working well, um, and then make it available to um, all Summit customers who are also CR customers. So um, again, we're continuing the early adopter work uh, some of the things we're doing in uh, this integration project, and I should mention, even if you're not a Sierra customer, you still benefit from the development work we're doing here to do this integration. <clears throat> the first phase of this integration is um, in, involved in uh, using CAS for your login or authentication option. Um, while doing that, we also laid the groundwork so that we can do a second phase, which will be support for SAML for that authentication. Um, and that SAML groundwork, um, the way we put it up, uh, we work toward the standard, not towards something that would specifically do for to Sierra, which means that it will make us uh, make it easier for us to expand that um, uh, functionality to include systems beyond just Sierra. Uh, so again, even though I'm going to be talking about Sierra for the next few minutes, know that this is also impacting Summon overall and does have benefit to all customers. So this first iteration, as I mentioned, will be logging using CAS. You'll have the ability to view availability and perform requests right there from the results page. As you can see here on the screen, under that first uh, um, uh, result, uh, you just click on the locations and it expands it. And you can see a variety of selections. The uh, patron can select one right there and request it. 
Um, also not pictured here um, is a library account uh, page, a My Library page that includes all library account information that you'd like, including loans, requests, fines and fees, and other information, messaging, things like that, um, all part of this integration. If you are a CR customer and you do want to get ready to use this once this is uh, available for general release, you can expect that to happen in the next few months. Um, if you're currently a CR customer and want to do that, make sure you're prepared by uh, making sure that you're on Sierra 5.1 or higher because you need to have the Sierra REST API version 6.0 or higher. So you need to have that in place and using it. And that is supported on the Sierra 5.1 platform or higher. <clears throat> And as I mentioned, CAS must be installed in order for this to work. If you don't have that installed, uh, you need to submit a request uh, to Innovative Support. Um, and if you have both of those things set up, once this functionality is uh, generally available, it's a very quick and easy setup process. In addition to that work, we're doing some work on tag matching for best bets. Um, currently, the way that best bets work, uh, you have to have an exact match on the key tags in order for it to be returned. So that means that in order for you to really catch anything and everything someone might uh, type in there or might uh, you want, you might want to have trigger a best bet, you have to type in every possible tag you can think of. This is going to loosen that up a lot and allow uh, matches when there are other words present as well. Uh, so just to show you a few examples of what I'm talking about, um, best bets will make a match of the tags present in a larger um, phrase. Um, I should mention, by the way, this came to us via the idea exchange and comes to you uh, on the roadmap, courtesy of NERS. Um, a lot of the functionality I'll talk about over the next few slides all comes from that voting process. So um, I always like to pause for a moment and just thank you for your contribution to those systems. Um, please be sure to go out and use the ID Exchange. If you're a member of Aluna or Igloo, as we start the 2022 voting for NERS, please be sure you participate in that because it has a great impact on the uh, product. Um, and I appreciate it. <clears throat> so again, to go back to the best bets uh, piece here, um, you can now do a search on something like job search. And if you only have a tag of job, that will now match. In the past, that wouldn't. Um, in the past, if you searched on search for a job in my area um, and you had a job search tag, that wouldn't match. Now that will because both those terms are available are um, present in that uh, search string. Uh, one thing that's not covered is partial keyword match. So if you are if you searched on looking for a job in my area and the tag was job search, then that wouldn't return a result. Uh, so you will still need to include some variations, but it should be much more, um, much easier to match and much uh, more prevalent uh, in the results when these best bets show up. Yeah. Next, I want to talk a little bit about quick links. These are the direct links to full text um, uh, in some of them. Uh, in the past, we added unpaywall, so we have a direct link to a PDF there. Now we're taking a look at the index and we know that there are other areas where we might be able to discover a direct link to a PDF or a direct link to full text in HTML. Um, this quick links project is um, the process of going through that. Again, this is some of that functionality that uh, we're doing some releases as part of the August release, um, but you won't be able to see it at this point. Um, we're doing some early testing in production uh, with a few identified customers to make sure that it's working and working well. Um, what I will show you in a little bit for the December user interface um, uh, in, uh, release in December, uh, I'll talk some about how this is going to impact the links and the way that they look and what's available to the user um, in the results set. And it's all, again, about how do we get that access to the full text up closer to the end user. And I think you'll be happy with what you see here in just a moment. But again, we're doing some work on this right now. It's included as part of the August release. We'll be continuing to do some testing. Um, and again, it will be reflected in the uh, user interface refresh in December. And then the last thing I want to talk about is short URLs for citations. Um, the permalinks that we use for links and citations um, and in the permalink um, icon in the results um, is a long encrypted URL. Um, and the reason why we have that long encrypted URL is so that when a user returns and tries to use that link, um, if for some reason your holdings have changed and you no longer have access through the original source and through a different source, that encrypted uh, characters contains enough information to return to the right results, regardless of whether or not you still have access to that same spot. So there's a benefit to that long encrypted URL. However, the drawback is it's so long, I've heard of cases where 
people's citation section of their paper is longer than the paper itself. Um, so we've created a short URL management system specifically for Summon. Um, it will be an improvement for all citation styles. We'll use that short URL instead of the long encrypted one. Um, any URLs created before this functionality is released will continue to work just the same as it has in the, in the past. But moving forward, um, you'll have a shorter URL making those citations look a lot better. Um, in testing in the last couple of weeks, we took a look at it and there are a few areas where we still need to shore up some of the functionality. Um, we could have dropped this into the preview environment um, at the last minute or um, a few days late, uh, but in evaluating what was going on and knowing that the, the last uh, release, we did have a little bit of a bug slip through um, after uh, our release to production. So rather than take a risk, be a little bit more conservative and make sure that we are um, being as thorough as possible, we are delaying this functionality until September. Um, so it will uh, not be in the August release, it will be in the September maintenance release. You won't need to do anything to activate this. These URLs will just start to replace the ones that we currently uh, create uh, for uh, using that encrypted uh, process. Um, so no need to activate it, but it will be available at the beginning of September. Now I'd like to take a moment uh, to talk a little bit about what we've got planned for the remainder of the year. And I'll first focus a little bit on 360 and TOTA and Client Center um, uh, release. That's planned for November 3rd. And some of the highlights of that release include um, up, updating, or excuse me, um, the ability to upload the database detail report to make bulk changes. So if you want to go in and say, get a proxy for open access databases or make changes to public databases notes, we'll be able to download that details report, make the changes, and then upload the changes back to make things quicker and easier to manage that information. Um, you'll also be able to configure the A to Z list to display the most recent, the database with the most recent coverage first. Um, when you, if a journal is found in multiple databases, um, that way, hopefully, they'll be getting the most um, current information or data from that journal. And again, that applies to the A to Z list. Um, we'll also allow libraries to configure their own holding URL replacements. And then finally, you'll have the ability to limit A to Z list suggestions um, to subscribe holdings. So in other words, when a user goes and starts to type something into that search box right now, um, any suggestions that come up from there come from the entire list of uh, possibilities rather than just the ones you're subscribed to. Um, after this feature is in, uh, implemented, you'll be able to make sure that on the only things suggested are things that you have in your holdings. So next, I want to talk a little bit about the December quarter release for Summon. Um, that's right, it's in December rather than November. Usually we do this in November, but because of that user interface refresh, we did shift this back a little bit. Uh, we wanted to put it toward the end of the year when most people's quarters or semesters are already over. Um, and also we wanted to give you a little bit of an extended preview, um, an extra week or so, so you can take a look at it and prepare. Um, the changes that we're going to make aren't uh, seismic, they aren't uh, large changes, they are just a little bit of uh, improvement of functionality, and I'll cover a little bit more of that in a moment. But, but again, we wanted to make sure that we do this at a, at a better time during the year and not in the middle of a quarter. Um, so as you can see there on the right-hand side, all the functionality we have planned, in addition to the user interface refresh, which I've already mentioned, um, we have a, a nurse feature coming in uh, to uh, allow uh, your, uh, the ability to display all links related to a result. Um, some improvements to how we uh, make recommendations for corrected spelling with the digging functionality, um, some expansion of what we do for exact search, uh, and some better tools for managing database recommender. And I'll go into a deep dive on a lot of that right now. So as I mentioned before, for the summon user interface refresh, um, this is a minor uh, refresh to the interface. It's not like we're going to uh, suddenly get rid of facets or something like that. Instead, we're looking at the usability um, and functionality and placement of information uh, on the results page currently and focusing on improving that functionality, specifically around facets, results, uh, the display of short results and things like that, um, and accessibility as well. Um, it may require some updates to training your materials. So again, that's why we are planning it for December with an extended preview window. Um, I'm about to show you some mock-ups right now of, of some ideas that we have uh, for what we'd like to see in the user interface refresh in December. Um, I want to put this disclaimer up here um, though to begin with, because at this point, we are in the usability testing phase, which is where we create a lot of things using images rather than actually coding the HTML. Um, 
and what ends up coming out the other end of this development process. I'm sure if you've done this before, you're familiar with it, but just to be sure we're all on the same page, um, can often look a lot different than what you originally imagined. And there's a variety of reasons why that final user interface might vary from mockups. Um, now that includes feedback from usability and accessibility testing. I'll talk some about the usability testing we've done so far to help uh, inform our decisions around the changes we're about to make. But then once we make some decisions, we take that back and test it for usability as well. And if we get feedback there, we'll make changes. And then accessibility testing. Uh, I wanna take a moment to call it accessibility in particular. Um, we'll take this entire um, refresh and make sure that we review it internally using our um, QA process and a variety of other things we do to make sure it's accessible. And once we're through with the development work, we're going to be working with a third party vendor uh, to have them review it as well and give us feedback on accessibility. So all of those things might change how uh, various things look um, or how you interact with them. Um, uh, any development constraints also might uh, have an impact on what the end user uh, interface looks like. Uh, code, or the code, the system performance may not support everything that we want. Um, and I'll call out a couple of examples of that, um, that, that. I'm not sure if they will be impacted, but are just some good examples of things that might uh, change due to um, development constraints. And then finally, differences in browsers and operating systems. Even if on one system we get things to look exactly the same way they do on the mockup, as you probably already know, just switching from browser to browser can make subtle changes in the way the, the system looks. So with that, let's take a look at some of the ideas we have. So I just wanted to start off with this sort of overall screen capture so you can see uh, sort of all the different areas that we're uh, looking at focusing in on. Uh, number one up there at the top are doing things like rounding edges, making things look a little more modern. Again, that's a good example of where browser support may uh, limit what we're able to do there, but we're taking it. The number two area there, the facets in the middle of the page, we're taking a look at how we um, uh, improve the interactions. We did a lot of usability testing around that, and there are um, challenges around how people interact with the facets. I'll talk about that in just a moment, uh, and we want to address those. Uh, the third thing we're looking at there in the upper right-hand corner are the icons. Uh, the fourth thing here is how we group various identifications uh, or identifiers or important data points for uh, the result. Uh, the fifth thing there is how we treat um, uh, links to resources and how we're going to pull in that functionality of all um, uh, links displayed. Uh, the number six thing down there at the bottom is how we get that PDF or full text online links to you quickly as possible. And then finally, how we organize the things there by number seven um, so that they work a little bit better as well. Um, so I'll take a little bit of time to talk about each one of those things. For facets in particular, as I mentioned, we've done a lot of testing around that. Um, I don't have a mock-up for all the various things that we're looking at doing to help improve the functionality. But one of the things that we discovered, um, we knew from feedback already some of these things, but we also uh, did a deep dive with uh, usability testing with end users. Um, and uh, for example, uh, it, the exclude functionality is very difficult for people to find. Most people aren't aware that it's there, um, or if they are aware that it's there, um, it can be a little cumbersome to exclude items uh, in the facet pane. So we're looking at improving that. Um, and actually, that more facet pane overall needs a lot better interaction. A lot of people don't even discover that there's more information there um, by clicking on the more button. Um, once you're in there, the apply button isn't intuitive. Um, the include and excludes both have some challenges. Scrolling interactions aren't as smooth as we'd like to see them happen. So we're taking a look at how we can do all that and improve that interaction and bring as much information forward into that facet pane as we can. Um, and that includes something you can see here in the mock-up, which is label improvements. And we are taking a look at possibly rounding the numbers. That'll give us a little more space there to possibly put some more functionality into the pane. Um, and uh, you'll still be able to find the exact number if you'd like. It's not, we're not trying to hide that information. You can just select on the various values for the facet. And at the top of the result set, you'll see uh, the entire count for that facet down to the final digit. Um, it's just that, uh, again, Google might help us with the design there. Um, but again, to show how this is something that's an idea we have right now, but it might change later, we're taking a look at international support as well. And while M and K work for abbreviations for the English language, um, how does that translate into other languages? And is it something that we can easily do for all sites? Um, so again, that's something that might vary. Uh, um, and also might vary based on input that we get from you or any users. Um, 
I also want to talk a little bit about, um, so next I want to talk a little bit about how we're organizing information in the brief results. It's been about five years since we overhauled the, uh, or did any significant changes to the results page. Um, since then, we've added a lot of different information. If you look at that before picture at the top, when you've got the original research indicator um, above the result, uh, underneath the thumbnail, you've got the peer review icon, the open access icon. Um, we've added Web of Science and the Altmetric Donut there on the right. Um, we've added Citation Trail. Um, all of these things have come um, since that redesign. So we're taking a look at how these things can work better together. So first off, I want to talk about the icons a little bit. In doing usability testing, we ask people to complete a variety of tasks to see how easy it is to do it within the interface. And something we always ask people to do is how do you save an item for later? Uh, and I have to say, I was surprised, but the uh, folder with a plus sign was not as intuitive as, as we'd like to think. People were having a hard time identifying that as the icon that they need to use in order to save something for later. Um, in testing using a bookmark icon, which you can see there, it's the second to last uh, um, icon there in the red square, red, excuse me, rectangle. Um, that, however, uh, because it's used in other settings and in browsers, people understood that, and so we will be converting to that icon. For all those various tags that we've added, peer reviewed, original research, open access, all those icons, we will take those and consolidate them on the right-hand side. It makes it a lot easier at a glance to sort of see everything. We've got um, various types of similar information that are grouped together here. And then finally, as I mentioned, um, that citation trail, web of science and altmetrics, um, putting those in a much more sort of succinct and linear piece, lining up the items a lot better, um, and also, um, that's cited by, as I mentioned, we're trying to bring more information forward. We're taking a look at how we can possibly bring forward the number of um, citations that might be related to that sites or cited by uh, functionality in uh, um, citation trail. So currently we don't display that count. We're going to see if we can add that in. And again, that's a good example of these are the things that we'd like to see happen. Um, depending on time scope and things like that, it may make it in it may not. And I will follow up um, later in the fall with a few, of course, my quarterly webinar um, and a variety of other, other information to help clarify what that final um, user interface will look like. So I want to take a moment right now um, before I show some of the other slides we have for the user interface and remind everybody about that display all links and results uh, functionality that, that, came, that came to us as uh, part of the NERS voting system. Um, and the idea here is, um, and again, this was uh, originally posted on the idea exchange was the ability to show every link that's available for a particular resource um, so that if one work, doesn't work, uh, users can find another one. Um, and again, this uh, in conjunction with the quick links and also in conjunction with the user interface refresh um, has resulted in what I think is an interesting and an attractive um, way to manage all of this information. Um, so as you can see here, um, and for now, I want you to please just focus in on the um, buttons that we have there for the links to texts. Um, as you can see, these are um, this mock-up was done on our um, current uh, result set, but this would be folded into that design as you saw previously. Um, but what I want to draw your attention to here is for articles uh, with both the quick links program um, and with the ability to show all links, you'll have two different things happen with these buttons. Um, for uh, the PDF and full text online buttons you see there on the left hand side, if there's only one link um, or whatever the best possible link is for that, we'll use that for that particular button. So if you click on that, it will take you directly to that result. Um, one of the things that we all know from experience and of course came out through testing is that that end user wants to get to the full text as quickly as possible. Um, so um, those buttons will take the user directly to them and we'll use quick links to populate those. Um, if there are more than one resource available for a specific item, um, you will be able to see the source for those things, the availability information, um, as well as what those are. So on the right-hand part of the button, if you click on that, it will expose, like you see here in the lower right-hand corner, um, a list of various uh, uh, sources for that content. And the user could then select one of those, click on that, and have it go through. Same thing for book links. Um, this one's a, a nice one because you can actually see it's not covered by the dropdown, but you can see exactly what I mean by the left-hand and right-hand side of the button. Um, 
And again, if there's a direct link, that will be the left-hand side of the button. If there's more than one link, um, you'll then get the all options portion. Where you can click on that and expose every possible um, source for that. Um, and again, these uh, the information that's displayed under the all options will basically be the same type of information you see currently with availability. Um, and uh, as you can see there, you'll also get an indicator in the button on whether something is available. Uh, last release, as I mentioned, there was a bug, and that bug was we exposed this functionality before it was completed. So you got a glimpse of what that light will look like. Um, that will be part of the user interface refresh in December. Um, as I mentioned, um, I will share more information with what that completed user interface um, looks like um, as we go along. If you have any feedback on what you're seeing so far today, please let me know. I'm certainly um, interested in hearing that. And like I said, we're also doing some usability and testing around it. Uh, when I share more information about the finalized user interface, I'll, I'll um, share discoveries that we got there as well. In addition to the user interface uh, refresh we have, there's a, a few other bits of functionality I'd like to talk about for December. It's going to be a busy December, that's for sure. Um, we're expanding uh, what is covered under exact search. Um, uh, we'll add the functionality to an exact search on certain fields. Um, and some fields that already do uh, an exact search, we're looking at how we might be able to improve that as well. And so that includes doing things like adding a, an exact match um, a toggle on the advanced search page so that you can know that you're doing that exact search. And then also looking at the treatment of the um, fields themselves to need to convert them to strings or are there other things that we can do to make them uh, easier to do an exact search on, uh, removal of, uh, of spaces, things like that. So the fields that we're taking a look at and working on are things like call number, ISBN, ISSN, uh, DOI, OCLC number, and patent number. And actually, one of my lead developers is taking uh, is working on the analysis of this right now, um, and we're looking to see if there's other fields we might include beyond this as well. And again, this is planned for part of that December release. Also, as I mentioned, we're going to do some work on improving how the corrected spelling works, uh, is, or did you mean? Um, this is a NERS um, enhancement as well. Um, currently, the way that it works, um, I'll show you on the next screen. Um, when someone does a search, like say I type, uh, I mean to type in biology, but I drop that second O in biology so that I type in biology or something like that, um, which is amazing. You still get 462 results uh, on that uh, incorrect spelling. But the way someone works today is we execute the search on the term as you typed it, and then we give you a, um, a link right here. Um, did you mean biology? And then if the user wants to search on that corrected spelling, they click on that link and it executes a secondary search um, on the corrected spelling. Now, most search engines like Google and Bing um, or um, searches on your smartphones or things like that actually do it a little bit different. They usually autocorrect and then provide the, um, the misspelling as an alternative. Um, so for example, on this search, um, it would respond back with a message like this that says showing results for biology search instead for the originally typed phrase um, again this is what users expect uh, from what they've been trained on other search systems uh, you will still be able to do that search uh, based on how you type it um, as we all know companies and products like to play with words um, you know their formal names things like that that uh, which spell checkers always want to correct and they shouldn't um, so you will have the ability to break out of that um, uh, spell check if you do that um, secondary link. And then the last thing I want to talk about for the December release is some of the backend management tools. Um, we're working on improving database recommender. When database recommender was launched years ago, it, there were only a few hundred databases that you could recommend. Um, and so the backend activation process uh, worked well. Uh, there are now thousands of databases in uh, Database Recommender, um, and we need to improve that activation process, how you rank things, and how you curate the sources. And so uh, we are working on a batch process for Database Recommender changes. The idea is you'll most likely download uh, a spreadsheet uh, with a variety of, with your current configuration, and then you'll be able to go and make the changes using your favorite spreadsheet uh, software, and then um, uh, upload that back to the system. And again, this should make things much easier for you to manage on that back end. 
Then the last thing I want to talk about with the summit roadmap is just some things that uh, um, we continue to work on, but don't necessarily hit releases. And because of that, I want to make sure that I call them out and I talk about them a little bit. That's things like relevance improvements. Uh, we continually get feedback from you and from patrons on uh, searches that you do uh, that don't make sense. Uh, when we start to see a pattern um, or um, there are other areas that we watch regularly, like loan item searching, uh, when we uh, as we can, we do testing around how we might be able to improve our algorithm around that. Um, we think we have a successful algorithm when it passes uh, and is successful with testing internally. We will then use a little bit of traffic from the production site to test that relevance algorithm and the performance there is better, meaning that more people click on the top results for that, uh, then we will promote that new algorithm. Uh, when we have new, um, and so sometimes the development work is validating what we have is the best one out there. Um, so uh, when we do have a new algorithm or when we changes, I'll let you know. But that's something we're always working on. Same thing for performance, um, how long it takes for the search results page to render, um, how uh, load management is working, um, the length of time it takes to do rights processing. Right now, that takes about 72 hours. We want to um, shorten that, um, as well as make sure that what's out there is performing well and is accurate and is stable um, and reliable. So that work is always ongoing. Um, and as I mentioned before, and I'll just hit it one more time, accessibility is something we work on at all times. Again, we'll have a third party um, in the fourth quarter of this year. Take a look at that new UI refresh and make sure that it's as accessible as possible. And the last thing I want to do is talk a little bit about uh, some upcoming webinars and community engagement we have planned. Igloo will be upon us in approximately a month, August 23rd to 26th. Uh, the registration for this is free. It is open now. Please go out and register. There'll be a lot of great content um, as well as some uh, opening and closing uh, uh, presentations around uh, um, Xlibus overall. I highly recommend you attending. Uh, it will be on Zoom. Uh, the program itself is being finalized. Uh, session proposals are still um, being accepted for a few more days until July 24th. Uh, if you're interested, there's the URL for the website. And I think I mentioned it already, but just in case, uh, we will make this PowerPoint available um, at the end of this session. So no need to write down this entire URL if you don't want to. Uh, you'll be able to pull up this uh, presentation and find it easily. In addition, the Aluda Learns program continues, which is a great program in my humble opinion. Uh, today, uh, we've got a uh, um, session on access services. Hopefully you haven't already missed that. Uh, you might want to go out and see if that's still available and uh, register for that. Um, we've also got an upcoming customer su success session. Um, that's what we've learned from the pandemic key strategies for summon customers. That'll be on July 29th. Um, and then finally, I just want to point out that there is an access point for all summon recordings. Uh, so if you want to, if you miss something and you want to go back and see it, you can go uh, follow this link, which again we'll make available, um, or you can just go to the Knowledge Center and look there for the summon webinar page. One final reminder. Chat is live. That's been out there for a year and a half, maybe two years now at this point. Um, but it's very useful. People who use it love it. It's a great way to get your questions answered right there in the moment when you need the help. Um, I want to remind you of the extended chat hours. Um, we have um, online live chat support for Summon 360 and Intota services uh, available Monday through Friday. And that's available from 900 to 1600 hours Berlin time or 900 to 1700 hours uh, San Francisco time. That's the time zone I have to be sitting in. Um, it's really easy to do. Um, all you need to do is click on that chat with an agent uh, icon. You can see in the lower left hand corner of that screen grab there. Um, or you can use one of the links at the bottom of this page um, and easily get to your questions answered, as I mentioned, right there in the moment. Um, if there's a content question, that may require a support case. Um, usually it's something that, you know, like that, that would take a longer time than just an initial chat to resolve. Um, but if you're unsure if you should open a support case or um, try a chat, I always encourage starting with chat because they will help steer you to a support case if needed. And it's a great way, again, where most questions can get answered and done right there in the moment. And that brings me to the end of uh, my prepared slides. Do we have any, everyone for taking some time out of your day to attend and ask questions? Um, I, as I mentioned a couple times throughout the presentation, but I certainly want to highlight uh, Summon is successful as a product because of your engagement um, and your contribution. 
Uh, your comments on the listserv are greatly appreciated. Your engagement in Igloo and Aluna and your participation in the idea exchange is also appreciated. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I take those sources seriously. And uh, if you have any feedback at all um, uh, on what you saw today um, or whenever, please just reach out to me. You can see my email address there on the screen. Um, it's also on listserv posts that I do. Um, but again, I just want to take a moment to say thanks for your time. Uh, and I hope everyone out there is safe and happy and healthy.